as one said, my name is Ben Norman. I'm the one of the co-founders and CEOs of Stork Exchange. We are an online consignment marketplace for secondhand baby gear. Um, we offer a white glove consignment service for parents looking to sell, as well as an easy online marketplace for parents looking to buy baby gear. Um, so the baby gear industry is incredibly wasteful, both financially and environmentally. Um, baby gear is incredibly expensive, and you en only end up using it for a short amount of time, sometimes as few as three months. So what parents end up with is a bunch of really expensive purchases that are just sitting in their garage or sitting in their attic, gathering dust until they end up in a landfill or thrown off at the local Goodwill. And so secondhand uh, resale is a huge opportunity here to reduce the upfront cost of parenting, but also really unlock the value that parents have sitting in their garages, sitting in their attics, and then help reduce the overall environmental impact of parenting. So right now, the kid and baby gear space is about $143 billion. Um, and only about 5% of that is resale currently, but it's growing rapidly, um, about two and a half times faster than the overall market is. And the reason is that parents are increasingly aware of the environmental impact of consumption, and they're also starting to be really concerned about the impact of inflation. About 60% of parents have made purchasing decisions in the last year with inflation in mind. And then looking ahead, we expect that growth to accelerate even further when Gen Z becomes the next generation of parents. Gen Z is incredibly bullish on resale. Uh, about 80% of them have bought or considered buying resale in the last year, um, and so much higher than any other generation. So we expect that growth to, to grow as they become parents. And then we also really believe that uh, the growth in the market, despite being impressive, is being held back by how frustrated parents are with the existing marketplace options um, for buying uh, gear. And we think better options will help accelerate growth even further. If, right now, most of uh, the secondhand market is on Facebook, Craigslist, marketplace, uh, Craigslist, and if you talk to parents, they're frankly incredibly fed up with those options. They're tired of buying an item that's not as good as they thought it was going to be. They're tired of putting the kids in the car, driving 30 minutes to someone's house, and realizing they forgot to put the stroller on the porch. They're tired of selling something on Facebook Marketplace and getting 100 people saying, hi, is this still available? And then when they answer them, they never hear anything back. So we think there's a huge opportunity here to go in and be, apply the, a curated marketplace model where we stand in as an intermediary um, to help facilitate the transaction. And you've seen that be really successful in other niches where authenticity, condition, and convenience are important parts of the transaction. You've seen StockX do it in the collectible and sneaker space. You've seen the real, real and rebag do it in the high-end designer fashion area. So the way our process works is we really do all the hard work on both ends of the transaction. So we bring inventory in from parents. Um, they can sign with us. They can drop items off at our warehouse. They can schedule a pickup for us to come and pick their items up for them. Um, we also work with retailers and brands to bring in their overstock items, their returns, their superficially damaged items that they're not going to be able to go and sell in their stores as new. So we bring every item in, we inspect it, we clean it, we authenticate it, we photograph it, we generate listings from our product database with all the relevant information, we have an algorithm for pricing things according to market condition, and then everyone can participate online. Consigners can log into a portal, see their item go through the process, see when it's live on the site, see uh, what it sells for, and then buyers can go on the site, they can search, they can filter, go through all the listings um, with all the details about the condition the item's in, um, high-res photography so they can see what the item actually looks like, and then just go through an easy online checkout process. And then we end up with both parties being happy. Consigners get a link um, where they can get paid out easily via ACH, Venmo, PayPal. Uh, buyers get the items shipped directly to their door with the uh, guarantee that the item's actually going to be in the condition they, they thought they purchased it in. And then we start to turn those buyers into consigners. About 30% of our consigner base right now are previous buyers. You know, they buy a stroller from us, they come back to sell that stroller, but they also bring their high chair, their baby carrier, their pack and play, so they help feed that inventory pipeline. Uh, wow, that did not come through uh, the way it looks. Um, anyways, uh, so uh, right now the competition is mainly um, P2P uh, marketplaces, um, as well as traditional consignment stores where you actually have to go and shop in person. There are a couple of other players kind of experimenting with the marketplace model. And right now, everyone's really building out a, a, a consignment network um, regionally. So you see them in the Northeast and the Midwest. We're the only player here in the Southeast, and we're really, really excited about the area. Um, you know, the Southeast is growing much faster than other areas of the country, and that growth is primarily younger people. So they're moving to places like Charlotte, they're moving to places like Raleigh to start families. So there's a lot of younger people with families in this area. So our team is, you know, Story Exchange is a company that was founded for parents by parents. 
My wife and I, uh, we were frustrated with the options for buying secondhand when we had our first um, back in 2020. Um, so we decided to go out and, and start a, an op, uh, a, a solution to the problem. We've uh, really kind of laid an operational foundation for the business with the marketplace, you know, figuring out that kind of how do you get to demand and supply. And we've really started to figure out that operational foundation for the business and seen our revenues really start to scale up so far this year. Um, we've seen about 30% month over month growth um, in 2023 to date, and we've hit about a 450,000 annualized revenue run rate um, over the last three months. And a big part of that is getting that solution of how do you have inventory. Um, and so we've brought on new retail partners, we've revamped our consignment program, and we moved into a new warehouse. Um, and all of that's meant since we, that move into the new warehouse, we've been able to grow our inventory by about 40% month over month. So that's more inventory, it's higher quality in, inventory, which means higher AOV, and that's really helped generate more revenue. So we're looking for a $2 million seed round. Um, that's really to grow our physical consignment network. It's to grow out our marketing team. We do about 80% organic acquisition right now. We don't really have any in-house marketing experience, so we'd love to expand our marketing team. And then uh, to go chase some additional brand partners. And we think if we go after all of that, we can do about two and a quarter million dollars in annual revenue within two years and process about 20,000 items a year. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, so the problem is real. I was cleaning out my mom's beach house recently and I found a pack and play from when my kids were babies in the closet. <laughs> my kids are out of college. <laughs> so it's, uh, that stuff does sit around and it could certainly be cons uh, consigned. One thing on, on your slides, your slides are busy. Um, I, I know that you had a formatting issue on that one, but yeah. just reduce words. Um, yeah. you're, you're telling a great story here. Um, so you can supplement all those words with your storytelling. I think that's good. Give me the Charlotte metric. So Charlotte is your only is your, is your only uh, market, correct, right now? Well, so we ship nationally. Um, we do about 30% of our business in the, I would say, Carolinas region. Okay. Um, and then about 70% of it's other where. It's so, so just but, give me but the. But you're only taking in from Charlotte. Yeah. We're, for, on the consignment side, retailers are, you know. Okay. And then you ship it. The consignment there. side is only Charlotte. So how many items, um, you know, annualize these numbers, but how many items are you taking in? How many items are you selling? How many items are you shipping approximately? And then most importantly, you said 450,000 annualized revenue. How much money are you making uh, on that revenue? Yes, yeah, so we do a um, so few questions. Um, so the first, we, in the last month, we put up about, we processed about 350 items. Uh, about 20% of those are consignment currently. Um, we ship out uh, uh, about, probably about 225 items a month in the last month. Um, with an AOV of about uh, just over $200 in order. Um, and we do a gross margin of about 30% um, each month. Okay. You're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to turn a lot of items to make a lot of money then at 30% gross margins, right? Yeah, okay. yes, um, we'll have to turn a lot. And I think you know, there's a couple of ways of going after, well, there's two sides, right? And with any marketplace, you have both inventory and, and demand. Um, you know, the inventory is out there, both in people's garages, but also through retail partners. Um, you know, you talk to some of the smaller brands, we've been talking to a smaller brand, um, and they do about 10,000 returns a year. Um, that's just not going anywhere. Um, it's basically people renting their product and then returning it on Amazon. Um, so there's definitely supply out there, and then there's a question of how do you go out and sell so, it. So the nationwide plan, I assume, would be to open up regional centers that can collect the items, clean the items, and then you'll ship, ship from those locations also. Is that the expansion plan? Well, yes. Yeah, so there'd be two, there's probably two aspects to it. So the first is we'd go with a physical expansion. It'd be more of a hub and spoke model um, with a low footprint in areas, and then you feed into a central hub where you're doing okay. most of your processing and shipping. Southeast is attractive for that. Um, again, a lot of high growth metro areas um, with younger populations, all within an eight-ish hour drive of Charlotte. You can get down into mid Florida that way. Um, and then there's also, you know, we'd also probably start going after actual consignment shops and looking to go after a bit of a franchise model um, to get ahead of our actual physical footprint. And you go in and you kind of work with someone who's running a, a local consignment shop or, or target the bigger chains like Kid to Kid who really are primarily focused on clothing anyways and see if you can kind of 
unlock, you know, promise them a cut of the revenue at, with access to our online shop and part marketplace. Yeah. Um, ben, you did a good presentation. All three presenters this morning were really terrific and had good materials. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, a couple of things I think are very clever in what you're doing in that you're sort of marketing this as a consignment business, but that's really customer acquisition. Smart, right? And like it seems like the predominant source of your inventory are going to be manufacturers and sellers who have open box items. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I think long run. Yeah. Yes. That's good. So, uh, you know, when Bezos started Amazon, he had the idea of selling everything, but he didn't start there. He started with books because they were the e easiest thing to inventory. They would never go bad, right? Quality control was really good. And by really zeroing in on books, he was able to get some traction and some brand recognition, some distribution, right? Um, is there an analogous product for you that's really a simple thing that you can become outstanding at and get just a basket full of people starting to transact on your platform? I mean, strollers are like the biggest thing because they're the biggest ticket item. I mean, a lot of the strollers people are looking to buy are $1,000 brand new and it's a big ticket item to spend, so people mm -hmm. are looking for more affordable options. So here's a fun game to play, right? Sit down one day with your team and imagine that you're playing against Stroller Exchange. And they're doing everything that you're doing, but only strollers. And that's all. And they took everything else out, mm -hmm. right? Would they be hard to compete with? What things would they not have to do that you are doing? What advantages, what disadvantages, right? And I'm not advocating to you that you do that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that that's a prospective way of taking this and really scaling it, right? Yeah. Because, like, the crowd likes this idea, yes? Right? We like this idea, yeah? Okay? Oh, thank you. And I, I don't have, a, like, my cohort are too old to be talking about this, <laughs> but my team, holy cow, they're having babies at record rates. And so I asked all, the, I asked all those families, what do you think of this? And they like it. Um, you're competing with Amazon. That's who you're competing with. Right? And so you need to have a price advantage. You need to be near them in parity with delivery. You know this, right? Yes. I would advocate to you that if you simplify things a lot for yourself, mm -hmm. you'll be more competitive on those vectors. Right? Yeah, and I think that's great advice. Um, I think kind of narrowing it on a focus is, is important. And, and that's part of the reason we, we started specifically with baby gear, right? Instead of kind of covering that full life. You know, I think long run, and the idea of becoming an everything store, right, is kids don't stop using stuff for three months and then not using it anymore. I mean, how many kids have tried out a, a sport that they decided they didn't like or tried out a musical instrument that they decided they didn't like um, and you end up with $250 worth of lacrosse gear sitting in your garage that your kid sweated mm. at once. Um, so it's like, you know, eventually you want to expand into all that hopefully as this well. This could be, this could go far beyond babies. Right? This could go way beyond that, right? Yeah. To all the disused stuff in your house. I moved last year. We shipped out 10 trucks worth of stuff. That was terrible, right? <laughs> um, I just want to make one other general comment. Uh, both Bruce and Ben had a table today that showed their product with a bunch of check marks and their opponents with lots That's of misses marks. and gaps, okay? If you're presenting to professional investors, they know that table is BS. They know it's BS, okay? Because you've cherry picked it and you've left some critical things off of it, and it undermines your credibility. So I advocate to you those charts, like if you're talking to someone who's smart and who's invested before, either put the things on there where you have a deficit or just skip the chart, because nobody believes in it anyway, right? Who wants to ask a question? Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned Yacht Paris times. Um, do you see that they're have radiation in where it's looking Yeah, yeah so, so I think we've, we've seen it's, it's attractive to parents uh, on either, on, on kind of like no matter what their age is. Um, I think part of our thought is that, you know, Gen Z is currently at an age where maybe traditionally they would have, parent, have, have kids, um, but you're not necessarily seeing them have kids quite at the same rate yet. And I think as we see them start to get older um, and really hit the kind of age where people are having parents or are having kids now, we'll, you'll start to see the resale market grow even faster. Um, so I think as that, that group ages up even further. 
Yeah, time for one more. Yeah, we do about a two to four percent return rate, um, and so we offer returns in a seven-day window. Um, if it's an actual issue on our end where we messed up and you know forgot that that stroller should have had a fourth wheel, like we're on the hook for that. Um, we do charge a small fee um, and return shipping in on if people change their mind. Um, it's simply hard. because you know if you want the perfect return policy, you should be buying on Amazon. And that takes Good job, Ben. Good job. Thank you so much. Do you have a